Welcome to Scoop World Order. Uh, this is a special one tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You guys get to talk to the greatest football player I ever played with uh, in my life. Uh, a guy that's very special to me. Uh, the only quarterback to ever win the Heisman Trophy in the history of the Big Ten. A guy that doesn't get nearly enough love, in my opinion, for what he did for Ohio State football. Uh, and just a guy who's an absolute dog. Uh, won all of my gold pants for me, so I appreciate him, except for the last one where he was in the league. But, um... This is going to be incredible. So get the super chats fired up if you have questions for Troy. We're going to talk about uh, his charitable endeavors, talk about his golf tournament, uh, and what it means to be a Buckeye. I think this is going to be a fantastic show. As always, appreciate you guys kicking it with us. Uh, we're going to go for about an hour uh, leading right into uh, the Purdue game, the Final Four March Madness stuff. So uh, again, this will be a quick hour. It'll be a great show. Uh, if you guys enjoy this content, please leave us a like, click subscribe, also click that little alert bell. The show is growing like crazy. This will be a huge show because you guys make it one, and it is great to be here, so we appreciate you as always. Well, got my boy. I got the Heisman, the man, uh, Mr. Troy Smith. Troy, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing very well, man. It was the, It's been a long time coming. Uh, your show has grown tremendously, man. So appreciate you having me. Thank you, brother. Well, um, God, I don't even know where to start with you. Uh, you know, you're a guy that I've told people that the only reason I have any gold pants is because of you. You're a guy that, you know, we played that 0-4 game and we were big time underdogs uh, and you kind of put us on your back. You uh, made magic. And, and I know, and again, football is the, the ultimate team game. I get that. But yeah. I always tell people, I'm like, look, it is the team game, but if I pancake my guy every single play and our skill guys suck, we're not going to win. So yeah. <laughs> sometimes you got to have a guy that goes scramble. You got to have San Antonio go cook uh, 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 Marlon, you know, the, the big corner that they had, Marlon Jackson. You got to have Gonzo yeah, yeah. go hit that, that long bomb early in the game to give us some confidence. So, you know, yeah. talk a little bit about, you know, you know your your career. Obviously, you were, um, it was rare to take two quarterbacks to the class. Obviously, you and Justin came in together. Uh, you beat him out uh, in the middle of 04, um, and the rest was kind of history. Talk a little bit about like what it felt like when you finally got your shot to lead the team. Because we were 3-3, three and three, and frankly, we sucked. Uh, and then all yeah. of a sudden, we put you in, and we ran the table, except for we had we, we lost to Purdue kind of at the end, like the week before that Michigan game. But talk a little bit about what it meant when you finally got your, your, uh, your, your start. Because, I mean, again, it was... It was a thing where, you know, a lot of us thought you'd just been playing. You know, Justin obviously had people. You know, yeah. when there's two quarterbacks that are good in the locker room, there's guys that want one guy and there's guys that want another guy. And there's little factions that build up and whatever. So, again, it was yeah. nice that you grabbed the reins and just ran with it. But what did it feel like when Tress finally, you know, kind of handed you the keys to the car and it became your offense? Well, it felt great. And, you know, if it wasn't for guys like you that were willing to stick their neck out there for me, because uh, back then to be a six foot guy in stature and to be a uh, not so cookie cutter version of the quarterback position, um, a lot of things were taken away from you right away. If you couldn't pan out, um, there was you, there were other guys along the way. Joe Daniels was a huge component to my success as well. Rest his soul, if it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be me. Uh, and then also, too, we got to give it to Tress because Tress had to listen to the cooler talking the bullshit as well on the back end. But ultimately, he gave me a chance. And um, it was funny, you know, the conversation that you and I had the other day with another Buckeye great, another Buckeye legend, Dave Patterson, when he was just mentioning the ability to watch practice and see the threes, be able to have some fun and move the ball when we were in there. So, you know, we were overachievers uh, with a lot of support from, you know, people around us, and that's what made it special. And without you guys, it wouldn't be me. Yeah, and, and that was something that Dave said, because I, I love Dave Patterson. Dave Patterson is, like, one of my yeah, best does. friends on the team. We you know we were in the same class. Our whole class evaporated after, like, one year. Everybody was gone. So, I mean, me yeah. and Dave were kind of the guys that actually stuck around for four years. And, um, obviously, Gonzo and, the, you know, uh, Ashton was in that class, Dante. But, those you know, those guys both left early. But, you know, with, with Dave, the thing he said to me, I remember this like it was yesterday, is that, you know, the thing about Troy – is we used to do this rehearsal scrimmage. And it was literally like the first team offense, which was like Will Smith and Darian Scott and those guys versus the third team. You know, so usually like we're out there like lambs to the slaughter. And, you know, so they put you out there. They put Justin out there. And again, 
I didn't care who played quarterback. I just wanted to win. And right. you moved the ball on the ones with a yeah. terrible offensive line and terrible, yeah. you know, the, 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 the young skill guys. And I'm, you know, we're going against like Chris Gamble and Will and Darian and, uh, you know, yeah. AJ, you know, AJ was a starter at that time. So it was like, I was like, David, that was actually a really good point by David. I was like, you know what? You're right. Like when you can see a guy create and move the ball, um, I think it's a uh, prophetic. What was your thought? You know, I tell people, you know, the Michigan rivalry kind of swung because of you. Um, obviously, Trust won the one in 01. Um, right. 02 obviously went to the national championship. 03, we lost, though. You know, we went up there and lost. And, like, I wasn't yeah, there because I yeah. read it. So I was, I was in the dorms. Guys, I miss Scott McMullen, man. He was cool as a yeah. cucumber. Taught me a yeah. lot, too. Scotty Mack was a great dude. But 04, yeah. you know, we stunk. And we were 3-3 three and three and kind of limping into the game. We were 10-point dogs at home. Yeah. You know, which yeah. is like, that's embarrassing for an Ohio State team. But, you know, that was your coming out party, in my opinion. That was my first start against Michigan, your first start against Michigan. Yeah, right, we started playing right. Gonzo. Teddy got yeah. a bigger role. Because you look at the offense yeah. at the beginning of the year, Teddy wasn't playing as much. Gonzo didn't play at all. I didn't play right. at all. And then also they, right. they put uh, TJ Downing in. Um, talk a little bit yeah, about that game, game and the lead up to, to that, specifically that 0-4 game, because... You know, nobody was picking us to win. Our school newspaper picked us to lose. I'll never forget that. I'm like, you guys have no faith. And I never let those guys forgive that either. Um, yeah, but your thoughts yeah. lead, leading into that game? Those early years, man, um, you know, to be an underdog is something that I'm familiar with and I understand all too well. And uh, you keep mentioning it and saying it. And we started off on the scout team together. Um, not only lambs for the slaughter, we were mincemeat, man. We were supposed to be... Um, you know, all of the different ways that they would just get ready for the game and uh, just be a, a jersey number and a person or a player, not yourself. You know what I mean? So the individualism that came later on came because we used to stand up and grab our nuts at practice first, uh, regardless if the X is, you know, on the tight end or uh, the ZY receiver, the red X. If you look at the red X and it's three motherfuckers right there, we ain't, I'm not throwing it to the dude that got three guys on him. You know what I mean? And that's the start of how we used to move the football, Kirk. It was that simple. The 04 game, that simple. We weren't expected to be and do the things that we did. We came out uh, blue collar as always, straight face, uh, dead serious. I remember mentioning to Gonzalez, 50,000 times, I know our first touchdown pass together is going to be something deep. I can remember Gonzo from high school uh, with the with the real loose cheeks, honey roasting guys in the 100 meter in the 200 at St. Ignatius. Like, I remember him. So the long strides, his toughness, it was just something about him that I knew we weren't going to be on scout team for long. And then also, too, if I ever got in the game with him, we're going to throw it deep. Point blank, period, especially when he's around. We had nothing but track stars around us. Heartline, uh, Santonio. People don't know Santonio was the track guy down there in Bell Glaze, man. Big time, 400, 200 guy. And then you you know who everybody's afraid of when it comes to running around on the pitch back in the days. They were scared again, Junior. He scared the shit out of people. You know what I mean? Uh, so uh, you, you uh, guys held up. Um, it was also cool to have Pierre Woods at the time, who is our oh. elder brother from Glenville High School. He was playing on the other side. And believe it or not, just like the days at Glenville High School, myself and Gian Jr. were like his little brothers. We were pestering him again. You know what I mean? So whether it was me just by inches and milliseconds <laughs> getting the football off and him almost sacking me or him almost tackling Ted by this much and then him missing that tackle and then pew, he's gone. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So that 2000 game was crazy, man. Uh, being an underdog, uh, coming from behind, um, you know, shocking the world because uh, mm -hmm. they were incredibly good that year. They were yeah. always uh, somebody to fear and they still are. And uh, we got to get our get back. Yeah. And uh, I actually have that play dialed up right now. So this was actually it. This is the shot oh, of Gonzo. Man. So I know it looks like uh, you're looking at an 8-bit Nintendo right here, but this is how it looks back in the olden days before 4K. That is amazing. Vintage, yeah. vintage. But, yeah, but you, you hit, you hit the... too, but 
You could tell yeah. that backside safety did not respect Gonzo's speed. No, no. And he's he's like, he's man, swarched. this guy can't get over there. Yeah. And look no. at the separation there, man. Yeah. And there's this nobody I mean, there's no there's nobody within twenty yards of him right here. I mean, there's the twenty yard line and here's the official and here's Gonzo. So you know, this it's it's just fun. Brother, man. You you watch these and you see the crowd explode. That's the best part about watching right. the wide shot on these games. And you know right, right. I mean when you do this and you know you see you got your boys, you got you got Robbie, TJ, Nick Mangold, Mike Knee, me, Hamby, uh obviously oh, you're in the gun. Yeah, yeah and, and again they only rushed three here, and we've got like you know seven guys blocking, so thank God it was gonna hold up on that. Though, man. Look yeah. at the protection. And then as a quarterback, I can be better by even staying in the pocket because the pocket is true. I drifted yeah. into that madness. Look at that catch, man. He's a beast. Yeah. I mean, that place went nuts. But I just uh that was one of my favorite plays ever. I got this whole game. One of these days we'll go through it. But I um yeah. you know, I, I I just I love like that was a shot where it gave everyone confidence because hey, like we're we're coming to win. Like we're not coming to just grind it yeah. out and try to keep yeah. it close. Like and we ended up hanging it on him is like 37 21 which is awesome so um you know we're, we're gonna go through a lot of these I, I have a feeling this won't be our last interview we're probably gonna do a bunch of these because they're gonna be fun but um tell me a little bit about your tournament choice tournament um it supports uh mental health uh for all of you guys that are on uh social media follow choice tournament um on twitter on instagram tell me a little bit about about what inspired you to do choice tournament um and obviously, you guys, you guys have big sponsorships. Um, if you'd like yeah, to sponsor, yeah. register for it, uh, sign up for it, everybody. Uh, that's part of Buckeye Scoop. Uh, but tell me about what inspired this, Troy. So everything that inspired it is watching the NIL from afar, uh, watching the unfair scales that happen. And you know me. I can't make this shit up. You know me. Uh, I mm -hmm. love my offensive linemen. Specifically, uh, the reason why I wanted to step into this realm and in this world and do some things right and keep it transparent is to give back to the offensive linemen. From the five starters to however many folks that make up the rest of the offensive line, I think it's probably like 14 to 16 guys, right? How many guys is it? Uh, yeah, it's about uh, probably 14 to 18 or so, yeah. like given yeah. you know, if so guys transfer out or whatever. With, with every story that we tell, Kirk, we start from the scout team. You feel what I'm saying? So I, I almost chimed in and interjected before and was going to tell you, no, that the, the offensive linemen weren't bad. We were just young and we didn't know. We needed experience. You know what I mean? We needed to work together. Uh, the reasons why I want to start and uh, keep this an annual thing as far as playing some golf, as far as uh, breaking down some walls and building some camaraderie is just that. Uh, when you get a chance to get on the golf pitch and uh, be around all of the grass and the nature and the scenic type stuff, uh, the guard is down, uh, the vulnerabilities are let go, and you're able to be yourself. Uh, what happens in Buckeye Nation, and I won't sum it up all in this episode because we're going to call this segment every time I get on the real Buckeye scoop because we're going to do nothing but keep it real here. And we're going to keep all that gray shit and the bullshit to the side and keep it funky, keep it 100. Um, I've just seen a discrepancy in the ways that the linemen have been taken care of versus the skill guys and everyone else. Uh, I know for a fact that if it wasn't for the big handsomes up front, uh, there is no offense. There is no run game. There is no pass game. There's no play action. There's nothing. If there's not those guys up front, literally, as soon as the ball is snapped, the QB, the running back, whoever, just tackle right away. I think that this will give us a chance to show that first we're dead serious about giving back specifically to them. And then second, if we're going to have the camaraderie that we do have at the position across the board, because we've got incredible guys in the NFL now, and two guys like yourself, uh, guys like uh, Nick Mango, whomever across the board, Rob Sims, that no longer play the game, Orlando Pace, one of the greatest to ever play it, that want to give back, that want to be a part, that want to show our offensive linemen that are working now to make us incredibly great, that we're there for them and support 
and by the tens of thousands to the hundreds of thousands of dollars we want to give back and show them that they're important not only that <clears throat> but specifically for myself uh the mental health aspect couldn't be more serious um growing up uh, i was a foster kid had to overcome a lot uh, the obstacles were what they were to get to ohio state i made it i got there it was a great time we went through a lot we did a lot but through the ups and downs of a 17 year old kid up until now a 39 year old man i didn't know that at times whatever that stress was was exactly the things that was taking me away whatever that anger was whatever that abandonment was whatever those issues were that led to me either making a hasty decision or a decision that just wasn't in my best interest is it was because of my mental health specifically i know across the board we can affect and help so many different athletes because those things are real 100% of the time for athletes. The head traumas that we go through will have you afterwards, specifically not seeing somebody straight away, because you can see three guys when you see, you know what I mean, once that trauma is done. And then after practice, who knows why my anger level is this, or who knows why I'm feeling a certain type of way. And then you get home and you take it out on a loved one. You get behind the wheel because um, whichever versions of you run into liquor or to alcohol or the benzodiazepines of the world, all that type of stuff has everything to do with mental health. And to me, if we get a chance to get rid of those stigmas, get rid of those vulnerabilities at an event like this to where camaraderie, we're together, brothers in arms, and making light of certain things to understand that it isn't the weight of the world on your shoulders and together we can help one another. Those are the reasons why I want to do it. I think it's, that's going to be outstanding. Uh, obviously we'll have scoop family is going to be out in force. Uh, we'll be big time there. So it's going to be awesome. So Thank you. I think it's, it's Thank the you. most, the most, uh, important thing. Um, maybe in the world is mental health right now. Cause I mean, there's a lot of people going through it. Uh, again, I think it's been, you know, I think that the devil's tool of social media I think that people, you know, especially young kids, they're impressionable. They don't understand yeah. that most of it's fake. And so they, they're always in this comparative analysis. Yeah, where, so so kids, they get in these in these funks. And I'm like, I have friends. And again, I, I've got young kids. They're not teenagers yet. Um, and also, happy birthday to your beautiful daughter who's having her sweet oh, 16th thank today. You, brother. Sweet 16th, so, so. Naya Lily. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, brother. So happy birthday to her. But, like, you know, a lot of teenagers are going through, you know, it, it's like, they've never had more depression, anxiety, like all these things. And it's because of social media. It's the devil's tool. Yeah. These kids, they just don't yeah. understand that, you know, you got to go, everyone goes through their own process. There's no race. Everybody does their thing. You know, and, and again, I think that that's something that, um, you know, it'll be beneficial to help clarify uh, and explain a lot of that. And again, I think that that's just, it's so critical because it starts at the top with the heads of the household, whether it's mom, dad, grandpa, yeah. aunt, uncle, yeah. whoever, um, you know, there's a lot of stress in the world right now. So, I mean, figure out ways how to deal with it in a healthy manner. Uh, and something obviously I need to be better with too. Um, it's just something that everyone deals with. And I think that's, uh, it's an amazing cause. I think it's a noble cause. And I think it's, I think it's something that truly does affect everybody. You know, even if people don't yeah. want to say it, people want to front, um, yeah. it affects everybody because there's, everyone's got a kid or a wife or, uh, some sort yeah. of, uh, relation going through something right now. And, uh, it's something that's yeah. really prevalent. Um, well, yeah, first of all, hold on, ahead, Specif hold on, hold on. specifically what we want to do is stop just putting word and lip service to saying that we want to do these things and actually give people templates or outlets to either take care of their anger, stress, whatever the case may be. And this is another reason why we're doing it, because we're going to have a version of a hotline, a 800 number that folks can call and talk to people when they're feeling whichever way. We're going to have a website that you can reach out to folks uh, like myself, not only like myself, but across the board, like-minded folks, like-minded persons and individuals that can help you through whatever it is that you're going through. The majority of why we take it so hard is because at times we feel there's nobody that is going through what we're going through. 
when there's so many like-minded folks out there, all you need to do is have an outlet. I, to- I totally, totally agree. And again, I think that when people are brave enough to just talk about it, it shows that, hey, you know, every- everyone's going through it, man. I mean, it's like you see you know, Angel Reese the other day after she lost, like she's up there. She says she hasn't been happy since she won the national championship because people are vicious. People, when you're a public person, it, you're in the 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 sector and, and people have access to you. And again, I tell these guys that played Ohio State now, I'm like, look, there is no reason to have social media right now other than you want adulation and you want to pick up girls. That's it. But otherwise, like you give you give the dumbest human beings in the world access to your mental health when you're on Twitter and Instagram and yeah. Facebook and whatever TikTok, um, and and people again, and I've said this, people have never been more vicious towards these kids for two reasons: these kids make money now, and I also they treat, they get treated like pro athletes, and the second reason is gambling is everywhere now. So when these guys lose their mortgage payment because they bet on Ohio State and Ohio State doesn't cover the spread and then they got yeah. a little drunk and angry, uh, they, yeah. they find these kids on Twitter and they say the most horrifically awful things to these kids. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and again, like I, I, I always, even back in the old days, like when we played, like we had Facebook and I would get crazy messages sometimes um, after we'd win and I'd be like, why is this guy so mad? It's like, cause we, oh, cause we didn't cover the spread. That's yeah. why. Like that's, yeah. so, you know, so it's like people lose their, their mortgage or their, their car payment or whatever. Um, and, and that's like a, a cycle that's going on right now. Cause it's new to Ohio. And again, I don't, people can always find ways to gamble offshore accounts, whatever. But now yeah. it's like literally turnkey right in your state, right on your phone. And again, I just, I, I've always seen it. And you know, with the Harry Miller situation that happened a couple of years ago where he was almost, he almost committed suicide <laughs> because he had a couple Great. of bad games. He read all the mean stuff people said, and you know, kids, they, they, they do that. They search their names and I'm telling you what people say is absolutely crazy. So um, it is, it's all awesome that you bring up Harry Miller too, because he's a component mm-hmm. and a part of this as well. Uh, yeah. He's the brother of the struggle, and he is our OSU brother. And I've reached out and talked to him as well, and let him know how I feel about it, and how we want to help him in his endeavors. I mean, mm-hmm. his endeavors. Um, the uh, Don't Make It Weird Foundation is Harry's mm-hmm. foundation, and it's awesome. Um, and I'm uh, I'm right with him. Don't make it weird. Don't make what you're going through weird. Let's make it to where we erase those vulnerabilities and get some people help. Yeah, I think it's it's going to be an incredible, incredible cause. All right, we got some questions, so I'm going to fire up a couple uh, super chats. I uh, appreciate you guys Uh-oh. keep these things flying Uh-oh. in. You'll, you'll love these, man. These are some good ones. Uh, uh-huh. Buck Nasty, uh-huh. thank you for being a Scoop Ultra member. Thank you for the 10. Troy, your favorite all-time Buckeye to throw to, and then also who's your favorite Buckeye of all time? So my favorite all-time Buckeye to throw to, you're going to get me um... – taken out here in these Cleveland streets because, you know, everybody around here knows that I love to throw to Gian Jr. I mean, come on. You know, I'm, a, I'm an idiot if I don't say that. But here's one thing I know about the game of football, and you know it too, when it's nut-cutting time and third and short, third and long, whatever the case may be, you either going to see a guy come back to the huddle with saucers in his eyes or he going to be cool as a cucumber and he going to be ready. You know what I mean? Santonio Holmes was the Kobe Bryant of wide receivers in terms of, guess what? Even though four people are on me, I'm, I'm still open. I was open a millisecond right there. Dude should have threw it to me. And here's what I loved about Tone. Tone didn't give a shit if it was first down or fourth down. Look, man, I'm open, bro. Throw me the ball, okay? I don't give a shit who's out here. I want the rock. Um, I have fun throwing to Gonzalez. I have fun throwing to Robisky, Roy Hall, but you know, Santonio San is just different. So I gotta say, Santonio. San uh, and who's your favorite Buckeye of all time? Ooh, now see, you got some of these new age guys, and I'm loving it because first off, with the new age guys, we got new uniforms and swagger now. You know what I mean? So I can really get in my bag and say, man, we looking good today. I'm feeling good about this guy or not, you know? All across the board, if, if, and I don't know why people don't say this. I mean, other than maybe they haven't seen some of those old school games, but I'm a, I'm a junkie for it. I went back and I watched why Archie Griffin won his two Heisman Trophy win. Like, 
you know, it's, it's a reason why he's the Heisman Trophy winner the way he is. Uh, he was incredible to watch. He was an incredible player back then. Uh, Eddie George was amazing. Um, believe it or not, I'm more of a quarterback than you guys think. One of my favorites of all time, man, Joe Germain and Bobby Hoying, man. Standing in the pocket, slanging the pill. Uh, Bobby Hoying with those big ass macho man, macho man Randy Savage elbow pads with the stripes on the side. You know what I mean? Uh, also, too, I love Braxton Miller, man. Whew. Braxton Miller was lightning in a bottle. Uh, hold your breath. You don't know what he's going to do. Uh, when he was at the quarterback position, it was really hold your breath. But then when they even did the slash type stuff and brought him in as a wide receiver, then he gave us the 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 the, uh, the neutral bullet swim move, spin move. Come on, man. You know what I mean? Like nasty. And then and then it, there's a guy that nobody talks about. Man, he doesn't get enough love, but. He was one of my favorites that I played with, Antonio Pittman, man. Antonio wow. Pittman, 178, 182 pounds, soaking wet, but he ran like he was 235 pounds, man. Solid 4'4 guy, tough as nails. And I said it a thousand times, he's the only guy that I ever seen get an actual cut in the game, and by the third quarter, it was a keloid. It turned into a keloid by the third <laughs> quarter, man. He's <laughs> too tough as nails. You know what I oh, mean? Like he the was, list man. goes on. I, Chris Chris Olave. Oh my God. Whew. Yeah. BC to yeah. watch. Love Chris Olave. And and too, Terry McLaurin. If you go back to all of those like videos and shit that I used to do with Will Crawl, we used to talk about the Buckeyes, whatever, I would always mention Terry McLaurin and what he was doing downfield, man. And look at him now. You know? We got a gang of skill guys, but guys like Braxton Miller, Ted Ginn Jr., Archie Griffin. Eddie George, Andy Katzenmoyer. I love the Buckeyes, so you got to forgive Cor me. I don't just have the first. Courtney, <laughs> Cor Courtney Green. Oh, Cornelius Green, Rod Gerald, all of those guys, yeah. man. Rex Kern. Yeah. You know, we used to throw the. We used to do some great things, man. Even the uppercut yeah. by Woody Hayes. How you gonna not love the uppercut, <laughs> man? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. We got a. Uh, this is a good one. This is one I got a lot. Uh, Travis Hall, thanks for the five. Appreciate you, brother, as always. Troy, how would your skill set translate to today's game? Go, Bucks. Come on, Come on now. That's a <laughs> no-brainer. Come on now. Oh, <laughs> in, man. In, in so many different ways, I've already spoken about this. And, you know, I mean, we played when we played. And the years that we played are the years that we played. We can't reverse that it just is what it is but the game is kirk what you and i evolved into at ohio state now that's what it is a true six foot guy like myself would be revered as opposed to back then you know feared and uh ostracized and i remember at the combine you know mentioning and talking to the folks and i remember just saying to the media like man you guys make it seem like being six foot is a disease or something you know what I mean? Like, Jesus, I can't help the way, you know, 72 inches looks on me. And then here's the killer. Here's the taker. 98% <clears throat> of the people that see me in person say, you're not six foot. They said, Dude, you, you're not as small as I thought. I can't believe. And then I'm like, man, get your ass away from me. <laughs> I, I, I never like, I never once saw you. as was like, yeah, this guy's too small to play quarterback. Like, that made no sense to me. Like your Bucks and Bones play quarterback. It is, it's always, and, and you know it as well as I do, Kirk. Like they build you up to break you down. That's the weirdest shit ever. We're going to build this guy up from tackle to tackle. I'm talking about you. And then once we get to the NFL, we're going to tell him what he is and what he ain't. Like what? Like that don't make no sense. And then nowadays, the entitlement and the different things that you see, I mean, the game is totally different. But I believe that my skill set, would translate into a guy that would be top three picks in the draft because that's all you see nowadays that get chosen at the position. That skill set, the ability to extend, adjust, and improvise, make plays on the go. And Patrick Mahomes is, you know, he's the Patrick Mahomes of that position. Now we got to give him that name now. You know what I mean? 
He the yeah. Patrick Mahomes of the quarterbacks, bro. Yeah, he's a monster, man. I got another one. Uh, Gio did it. Uh, thanks for the 10. Appreciate you, brother. Let's state the obvious. His Ohio State career is legendary. Absolutely. If he does not get sick, he's a starter for the Ravens, not Joe Flacco and not Kyle oh, Bowler. Man. Period. You make Cleveland proud. Blessings, Troy. Um, Thank you, brother. Yeah. Much respect. Much yeah, you got a lot of Cleveland love in here, man. I'm telling you, the Cleveland people love you. Uh, I love Buckeye, folks too. <clears throat> Buckeye Blitz, thank you for the five. Troy, thank you for making my childhood great. What's your best story you have about Kirk? Oh, God. We might have to go X rated. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I appreciate you, brother. Um, I O. I O. God, my, my best boy. Story uh, I got about Kirk. My best oh, story God. I got about I'm Kirk. I'm scared to death now. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm because I know Kimmy's watching and, you know, I'm not going to get you in trouble. You are a responsible young man. You're a responsible husband. And I know you are a great guy. But here's the one thing that I always will keep near and dear to me about Kirk. And, you know, I know that he'll travel into any dark alley with me under these, you know, pretenses and understandings. Um, when he went out and told the media, um, you know, not only his two cents, but the actual facts that was going on with the offense. Um, I don't I don't think the average person understands what that really means. First off, um, you know, there are different facets amongst the 110, 115, 120 guys that are on the team on the college side. The cool guys are going to be with the cool guys. Um, the nerds are going to be with the nerds. You know what I mean? The the, the jocks are going to be with the jocks, whatever, whichever way you want to call it. So what Kirk did when he went out and basically uh, stood up for the facts, he now really didn't have a home because he had offensive linemen looking at him crazy. He had oh, other yeah. portions of the team looking at him crazy. And the nerve of a young guy to, you know, grab his nuts and say what he really felt, that to me, will always keep him near and dear to my heart because anybody that will put themselves in a quote unquote version of harm's way lets you know right away that it's not about them. They see you. And then not only do they see you that they want you to succeed. Uh, guys like him allow me to understand that even though there is color, there really is a color especially if you are going to do things right and not only do it right, but be truthful along the way. That's my best story that I could have about him. Uh, the football means a lot, but the character as a man is everything. And this is exactly why um, whenever he calls, I'll be there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I appreciate that, man. I was banned from the media for a year for that one. So I, I, I had my, I remember, my first, my first I, interview ever and. Yeah, there were a lot of guys in that locker room that hated me after that one. So again, I don't care. Like the one thing, the one thing about me is like, I'm not in it to be popular. I just want to be right and truthful and great. And again, that's that's what I care about. Because again, I don't need friends. I'm good. You know, I'm I'm a lone wolf. And again, I was all about winning. That's all I wanted yeah. to do was win. Like I don't give. Like again, I never cared because like if we had, you know, if we didn't play, you know, like the color thing, like I just want to win. You know, you give me yeah, San Antonio yeah. and Ted Jr. And you give me Gonzo, yeah. who's Cuban. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't care. You know, like, yeah. I just want to go get those gold pants. Because, like, again, there's nothing more miserable than losing, especially oh, at Ohio God. State. When you lose, man, you are dog water in the entire city. Like, girls think you're ugly. Their dads think you're ugly. The professors think you're a douchebag. So, like, losing sucks. So, Winning yeah. is the exact opposite. So when you win, yeah. when you win that Michigan game in 04, man, it is lit. You know, so I mean, Ooh, yeah. you know, so that, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. So, you know, I just, like I said, <laughs> I just like to win. Like, I don't care. And, and and again, not everybody has that, that dog, like legitimately, they don't have that dog in them. And there's some guys that they thought they yeah. did, but you know, you get out on that field, man, your daddy can't save you no more. You know, your daddy can't buy you a win. You got to go get one. Um, and this is how I always... <laughs> I was like, you know, and I used to say that because you know, I grew up, I didn't have, my dad died when I was 12. So, I, I mean, I didn't have a dad. I was a lot, like, I was a lot closer to a lot of the black oh, guys. Yeah. Like, me and Dave Patterson lost our dads early. So, like, you know, if yeah. you were a single parent family, yeah. I related yeah. a lot more to you than than other ones, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. ZZM, uh, thank you for uh, being a Buckeye Ultra member. And thank you for the five. Troy Smith, I'll never forget that clutch drive at the end of the scum game. 
It's probably the 05 game. Buckeye Nation loves you. What sold you on coming to the horseshoe and being a Buckeye? That's a great question. Uh, what sold you on that? Um, again, with the with a lot of guys, two quarterback class and late offer and the whole nine yards. What sold you on that? Uh, it's a great question, DZM, and uh, thank you for the love and support as well. Uh, the thing that sold me, because I could have went uh, to other Big Ten schools, I could have went to a couple SEC schools, I could have went to a couple ACC schools. The thing, the thing that sold me and the person that saved my life was Ted Ginn Sr. If it wasn't for Ted Ginn Sr., literally, uh, I don't know how many times, grabbing me with both of his gargantuan hands on my shoulders and calming me down, you know what I mean? Not only calming me down, giving me a safe place to be a young man, uh, giving me a safe place to voice my opinion. And then once my opinion was voiced, because I'm still a kid, okay, we understand that you have an opinion. Now this is what we're going to do. You know what I mean? Uh, he religiously slowed me down in those rights. Uh, he religiously put me in the understanding of what it meant to be a Buckeye, what it meant to stay home and be successful. Um, what it meant to stay around Ohio because we are Ohio kids. We are Ohio men. Ohio is our legacy. And what will we do for the next generation of Ohioans to be better? This is what he always talked about. This is what he always expressed. And this is why I feel so transparent about not only giving back to a group of guys as opposed to just one or two, but giving back to the inner city as well. Uh, if we don't create and make a way, who will? Uh, these are desolate Cleveland streets, um, barren at times. I mean, the shit look like you can, like, this looks like Gotham City at night at some times. Like, this shit is crazy over here. You know what I mean? And if we don't stay home, love it, and try to nurture it and put some lotion on it, because that shit is ashy at times, who, who will? You know what I mean? Um, that's why I wanted to stay home and be a Buckeye. Uh, I, I love my state through and through. I love the people. It's just at times, you know, you wish that the reciprocity was there. Uh, we'll get into that on a couple of different episodes on how I know that we could do better and bring uh, certain factions together and certain attitudes and egos together and get rid of that punk shit and start doing shit the right way. You know what I mean? So I love being from Ohio. I love my Ohio background, and that's the reason why I stayed. I love that. Uh, Philip Halsenholder, thanks for the deuce. If you have a question, toss that in the chat. Patriot, thank you for the 10. Troy was born too early and would dominate in today's NFL. I agree. Uh, the spread offense, Jalen Hurts. Uh, he was yeah. Jalen Hurts before Jalen Hurts existed. So, yeah, I uh, I agree. Nevada, or, uh, excuse me, Troy, uh, is that I mean, that's how I'm feeling, but you feel that way? Definitely. Patriot, thank you for those words, man. I feel the exact same way. Uh, there's a couple different carbon copies that I see of myself or that I, as soon as I watch them throw the football or orchestrate, I'm like, damn, I remember what that feels like. Mm -hmm. And when you mentioned Jalen Hurts, it really gave me goosebumps because when I got a chance to meet him when he almost won the Heisman Trophy, he's just a lighter version of myself. Same height, same, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Disposition, handsome kid, awesome dude. You know what I mean? Voiceless guy. Uh, talk with a lot of, spoke with a lot of conviction. You can tell he was a leader right away. So I got nothing but love for Jalen Hurts. And then also, too, um, you know, we got a guy in Cleveland that we do a lot of the same things as well. As soon as Deshaun Watson turns it on, oh, my God. You know what I mean? Vinny, mm -hmm. Vinny showed him what he needed to do. Throw to Njoku. Throw to Njoku. And we're going to be good. Throw to Njoku. Nah. Njoku, Njoku is nice, man. He's a pro. Nah, uh, yeah, you, you remind me of Jalen because you guys are both like muscular, strong. Like, I mean, in, his, in that Philly <laughs> offense, like, oh, my God. You had to rush for like 15 touchdowns a year, you know, I on top it. of the throwing. You know, it's, just, it's just hard to defend. Steven Rodriguez, thank you for the five. Appreciate you, brother. Got to thank you, Troy. You're the reason I became a Buckeye fan when I was eight years old. Buckeye legend in my book, you deserve a statue. I agree with that. 
Um, I think all the Heisman guys should have statues because like Florida does that. I don't know why we don't do that because we got the money. Um, oh, we got a we got a couple more real Buckeye Scoop episodes to know why we don't got statues. <laughs> we gonna keep it real across the board. Oh my god, we gonna keep it funky. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love that man. Um, yeah, I, I get a lot that a lot of these uh, these young guys are they're Ohio State fans or they came to Ohio State because of Troy Smith. I get that all the time from guys. Yeah. Travis Hall again. Thank you for the five silent auction. Uh, is there a silent auction for the outing? I'm sure there will be some sort of an auction. Yes. He'll donate barrel heads uh, for the silent auction that support the cause. These, uh, I think I get my That's awesome. So these, That's are, awesome. these are really cool. Travis makes these, and it's uh, it's a giant barrel hood. Oh, you can put your did. logo on it. So for you, awesome. I mean, he could put yeah. T-, T. Smith 10. You could autograph it. And, or you can have yeah, that be amazing. Your boys. Yeah, you can have be your amazing. boys. Travis, like Ricky, thank you, man. Have Ricky Williams and those guys that are coming uh, autograph it. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be cool. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. Let's, yeah. uh, you know, leave a couple of messages or however we can stay in correspondence. Let's try to make that happen. That's awesome. Yeah, Thank holler you. at um, Travis. I'll get you Danny David, who's the GOAT. Uh, we'll get Danny's uh, info. He's on He's on every social media known to man, but he's an awesome dude. But he's helping Troy organize everything. He's a beast. That's my dude, man. Yeah. And he's, yeah. he's a yeah. fast mover, yeah. and he, get, he gets a lot of stuff done. So shout out to Danny Eddie. Daniels, my dog. Yep, Danny uh, David, he's a Buckeye himself, th- so show him some love all across all of the social and, media media outlets. He, he kills it. He's the best. And, and I apologize. I know it's Danny David. I was looking at this. This is Larry Daniel, so that's why my wires are across there. Danny, yeah, do, right, not be, do not beat me up when you see me. Because I was looking at Larry Daniels, and I was calling you Danny Daniels, even though I know you're Danny David. So I apologize. Uh, Larry Daniels, thank you for being an ultra member. Thank you for the 10. Uh, thanks, Troy. Was there a big game uh, in a critical play where you wish you let a pass fly and thought you wish you had that one back? That's always a good question. Uh, yeah, maybe. Great. That's uh, a good question. Is, was a great there a play question. that you wish you had back? Yeah. Uh, Larry, great question. Um, obviously, we all would, you know, wish that the national championship would have turned oh, out a different way. Um, I would say some of those first Aaron passes that I threw in the national championship. And then the first interception that I threw to Joe Hayden, I love him to death, but I don't know why I threw it to his ass. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, those passes in the national championship um, across the board, you know, I wish I could have played better and have done better and been better that day. Cause um, it was abysmal, man. It felt bad. If I know you guys were pissed at home, dude. It felt like, we Oh God shot with a 12 gauge sawed off shotgun right in our chest man but much respect to those guys because i had a gang of friends on that team and i still know them to this day and you know um life is about those lessons uh it's about becoming out better on the other side and um you know as of now we have but yeah to answer your question some of those throws in that national championship game i wish i could take back yeah oh it wasn't very little of that was your fault compared to uh because we all sucked that night so that was one where we truly lost as a team on both sides <laughs> of the ball uh donald and karen ross back thanks for being an ultra member thanks for the five troy you are a massive legend massive is like my key word that i use on all my youtube things and i put it on t-shirts because everyone makes fun of me for using it but so i have shirts that say massive and buckeye scoop uh so thank you for all the memories uh troy oh they loved all this i o i o baby my dog. I love it. Thank you, Donald and Karen. I hope you guys are having a great night. Uh, you, Travis, uh, I think this is a double up. But you talk about the uh, barrel hogs. I'll get you hooked up with Danny David, not Daniels. So I'll get that all locked in for you. <laughs> um, Danny's going to kill me when he sees me with his, uh, his he'll hit me with a two piece because I called him Danny uh, Daniels instead of Danny David. So sorry, bro. <laughs> Karis Washington, I'm looking forward to seeing you and your wife at our meetup on April 13th next week, one week from today, 9 a.m. to 1130 Buffalo Wild Wings, Lane and High. It's going to be awesome. Uh, yes. Troy, Karis, who's a Scoop Ultra member, uh, and also thank you for the five, asks, what advice would you give to young quarterbacks? Man, uh, I got a lot of advice that I would give to the young quarterbacks, Karis. Um, I think first and foremost, Um, I would say be coachable. Um, The entitlement that I now know and see, because last year I got a chance 
to be the offensive coordinator at Elyria Catholic High School in Elyria, Ohio, Lorain County. Uh, Division four guys, incredible guys. We're gonna still do some pretty unique things with them as well. Got a couple football camps coming up in May, May 25th. We're gonna do something pretty special out there. But the first things I would say for any quarterback is to be coachable. Here's the thing about playing the position. <clears throat> You actually need to be coached to become better. Uh, if that was the case, there would be no coaches on the pitch and you would just go out and perfect the game plan and you wouldn't need the coaches. Um, first and foremost, if, if the coach tells you that if you run into that brick wall 15 times on the 16th time, it's going to loosen up. You know, I know it's far fetched, but you got to have that type of you know, blinding your eyes type feel and say, you know what, I believe in this man and I trust him. And I know he has my best interests at hand. The first thing I would say is be coachable. The second thing I would say is, I know I'm speaking blasphemous right now, but dead serious, put the cell phones down and get away from social media. Go back to blue collar, old school ways of training and becoming better as athletes. And that is like a horse with blinders on. We need to start running more hills. We need to go back to the old school ways of uh, not only shutting your mouth and doing your job, but, you know, our opinion at times is just that. It's just your opinion. When you're a baby, when you're a kid, when you're an aspiring guy who wants to become something, be quiet, listen to your coaches, Go back to old school ways of doing things, and I guarantee you things will come to fruition. I, You can't get enough old school, man. I think old school is the way to do it. And the people that go yeah. old school are the ones, they beat these new school kids all day because they're tougher. Yeah. Like Jeremiah yeah. Smith, who's our next superstar receiver, <laughs> his, his trainer has him run hills constantly in South Florida when it's 98 right. degrees out. So, you know, that's Talk why his... About- Greek yeah. God, talk about yeah. a dude that looks like a man amongst boys, and he just set foot on campus. Oh my goodness! Wow. Yeah, but he, but he works like that. It's like San Antonio, like you know, when they're in Bell Glade chasing you know jackrabbits around and stuff. Like I mean, that's not that's not iPhone, and that's not a fancy gym with air conditioning. That's like let's go catch these rabbits so that we can kill them and sell them. You know, and like, and why is San Antonio so fast? What did he do as a little kid? Chase rabbits down and until their hearts exploded. So. You know, I, uh, I, I love it. Um, Thomas Taylor, uh, thanks for the five. <laughs> this is funny. You must have been with him. Uh, do you remember drinking in the hotel at the Omni Bar after the Big Ten Championship Wisconsin game, Troy? I, I, <laughs> Let me tell you, you something, man. Uh, Thomas, that's an awesome question. Uh, it seems like when we were at the Omni Bar, uh, we were having a good time. And usually when you're having a good time with those spirits, uh, sometimes you don't remember the next day. So because we're on the scoop, I remember. I remember you, man. <laughs> Thomas, I remember you, baby. Oh, man. I'm, the spirits the spirits turn you into a spirit. Like the ghost of, Christ, the ghost, the ghost of Christmas past. You know? <laughs> uh, Deb Sobel, thank you for the five. Thank you for being an ultra member. Uh, love you, Deb. You're on here every night. Thank you so much. Uh, tell us straight, Troy. Kirk was a softy, right? Oh, dead real get me in trouble. Troy's gonna have to out me. Troy, no, you, no, can, you can answer that. Yeah, I was about to say, here's the thing about women, man. They always do this to us, man. They definitely get us to be vulnerable. Deb, you're absolutely right. He's a big teddy bear, okay? He puts on a show, he loves to wear all black because he likes to look menacing, but he has a great bear hug. <laughs> All right. Ask the kids. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I appreciate you, my man. You're the best. JJ, what's up, my man? Uh, thank you for the 20. Appreciate you. Troy, you're the GOAT. I agree. Uh, have you had the chance to mentor some of the recent Buckeye quarterbacks? And what are your thoughts on CJ Stroud? Oh, thank you for that compliment, JJ. Um, we got a lot of GOATs around these parts, though, man. We got some great players. Uh, seems like, too, as soon as you get drafted – high enough in stature, your ass just become a goat right away. It don't matter what you did in college. <laughs> you get drafted high, you become a goat. 
Uh, and to tell you the truth, JJ, I have not been able to mentor or be around uh, the quarterbacks. Uh, in a lot of different ways, I want to try to bridge a lot of gaps that have been formed uh, because in however many different ways, uh, the Trestle guys, legacies, and the Trestle way of life have been besmirched and uh, a lot of different shit thrown away and just different ways that they just try to just get us out of the deal. So to tell you the truth, no, I have not been around the QBs. I wish I could, but I'm not a part of no fake corny shit. And a lot of shit goes on that I don't approve of. And it's still going on to this day. And, you know, the reason why I want to voice my opinion in this manner with Kirk is because point blank period, I'm tired of the corny shit and we need to come together. Uh, we got the golf tournament coming up <clears throat> in August, and that's going to be August 12th at a Little Turtle Golf Club in Westerville, Ohio. And I have more out-of-state love with quarterbacks and folks from major universities than my own QBs from back home, from here. Uh, I got more love from out-of-state guys. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Ricky Williams, Johnny Manziel, um, you know, even the rapper Simba wants to come and show us some love. You know what I mean? Like, the reasons why, I don't know, but I wish that it would change, and I wish that we would be more intimate with the guys. And um, I guess at times you're just not on folks' radar. Uh, this is another reason why we're on this call. We got to bring the collectives together. We got to bring the whole agenda together. Um, you know, when we're together, we can achieve a lot more and be so much stronger. It was like pulling, pulling teeth to try to even get the collective to see eye to eye to help with this deal. And then I look on the internet and see some other shit where they got another golf tournament. And they, it's like, what are we doing? You know what I mean? And I'm sorry that they turned into word vomit because I love my Buckeyes and I love being around. But if and when they treat you like a stepchild, once the first favor is refused, you never ask for a second. And my name is in the rafters. So let's really keep it real. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to eventually be around um, because I love C.J. Stroud. We got some special things going. We got some things going with uh, some Hebrew family of mine that we all see eye to eye with, and they're helping C.J. out tremendously. And um, once we just, you know, chop off the, the head of that ego snake, we'll be able to be around all the, uh, around one another all the time, and it'll be good. So I love C.J. Stroud, love what he's doing for the Texans. And uh, he's going to be an awesome player. I love that. Uh, Donald and Karen at Rossbeck, thank you for the five. Thank you for being an ultra member. Troy, what do you think about the scandal that is going on in Michigan? The cheating, the Connor Stallion <laughs> stuff, video. And uh, what's your yeah. thoughts on that? We, we getting into it. I got a lot of thoughts on that, man. Um, here's the first thing. Great question, Donald and Karen. And here's what I do know. Where there is smoke, there is fire. Okay, I'm from the old school. <laughs> Feel what I'm saying? My mother taught me well. Even my foster parents taught me well. And then the men who got a chance to get their hands on me along the way kept it real with me too. To me, any of that shit that comes up like that in a major way consecutively, come on, man, it's got some truth to it. Now, you know, if you got the ability to dance around it and, you know, hop and skip and jump and, and not affect you, then that's something totally different. But the karmic way of life is real. Hopefully us getting our ass kicked these last three years has made us angry enough to, now that we enter into that game, we know what it means and we don't want to lose again. I know I don't want to lose again. I don't, I don't even want to tell you how many hundred dollar bills I'm down. You know, I mean? you know what I mean? I'm slapping fives with these Michigan guys. I got to give them this money and shit. Come on, Buckeyes. Uh, I need to give them money. Come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I love it so much. Uh, ZZM, thanks for being an ultra running. Thanks for the five. Uh, do you think there are some adjustments that could have changed the results of that national championship game? I know you guys were better than what we saw. I'm like, well, one thing that could have been adjusted is that we couldn't have, like, maybe hurt 
Ted Ginn Jr. on the first play of the game. That might have helped. Oh, God, yeah. Well, I mean, wow. you know how good you know how good little Ted is, man. Little Ted was like, yeah. you know, yeah. he's the he's the best player on our team. Like, he's the highest drafted guy. He went eighth overall or whatever in the that. draft. So it's like you got you know, that right. That's that's a, you know, him and you were the guys we couldn't lose, and losing one of them, it was like it was bad. Um, yeah. but your th- your thoughts yeah. on that, Troy? Uh, I do think that. You know, adjustments are part of the game. In hindsight, it's 2020. Uh, you know, what we thought, and you were there too, Kirk, we thought that we had a guy that was plug and play. We thought that as soon as Ted went down, the guy that went in right after would be the, you know, not 1A, but 1B. You know what I mean? Um, he was a younger guy that just wasn't what happened. We see how important Ted Ginn Jr. was. And then not only that, um, our only touchdown came from running the football, correct? Antonio Pittman, right? Yep. Yep. Hindsight is what it is. I think we should (laughs) have ran the ball a little bit more. You know what I mean? So, whatever. uh, You know? It's, uh, it's, it's. Like I said, losing your best player in the first play of the game, when that happens, you're just like, man, this might not be our but, night tonight, man. But not, on, but not only that, man, like the following weeks when I played them same bum-ass dudes in the senior bowl and was fucking up and down the field, I'm like, this is who we just played? Like, we <laughs> lost to these dudes? Yeah. Yeah, the SEC All-Star team. That's like when you're playing the senior bowl, you're playing north-south. I mean, the south is like the SEC All-Star team, and you were dogging them. You know, and we was kicking their ass, man. I feel you, dude. Uh, Jennifer Thompson, thank you for the 50. Uh, preach it, Troy, uh, with a big heart. So, appreciate you, Jennifer. Uh, thank Black you. Pyro, thank you for the five. Uh, what is the Heisman House like if there is one? And will you be in any upcoming commercials, uh, Troy OH? <laughs> IO, IO. Uh, the Heisman House is fun. I've been in a couple commercials. Um, They've kind of um, went in a different direction as far as what they want now. Uh, what you guys don't know is is the production companies change every year or they change however many different years uh, in advance. And if you're not a part of, you know, uh, their algorithm, you're just not. Um, the commercials are cool, but, you know, it is what it is. The Heisman House every year is held at like an old plantation looking ass house wherever we be at. It'd be the craziest shit, man. It's like a 16 to 18 hour shoot. It's pretty cool, but I've never really understood why it takes so long because as long as they got the fucking cue card up, all you got to do is read it and read that shit and be done. You know what I mean? Like, we in there for six hours because you know who can't get his damn line straight. I'm like, man, this shit is crazy. You know what I mean? But it's a, it's an incredibly fun time. Um, it's awesome to see. I do like some of the uh, storylines, uh, but they can get they can spice that shit up. They need to do you know they need to come with some better skits. You know, <clears throat> yeah. Hey, that's what that's what you're there for, man. A little spice, <laughs> JJ. Uh, thank you for the fifty. Appreciate the realness, Troy. Thank you, JJ. Uh, thanks for chiming in. Uh, that was a great oh, question as well. Chris Schmidbauer, our boy. Thank you for the five. I just had to do one of these for my man T Roy and Kirk. Just wanted to support my guys. So Schmitty was running around the Woody Hayes when we were. So it's always great yeah, seeing you out here, Schmitty. My boy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Great to see you. Great to hear from you, Schmitty. Appreciate you, brother. Well, it's uh it's about six. Uh, we can wrap this thing up. Troy, any final uh thoughts? Uh, we wrap the show up. Do uh, you want to come back on again? Man, I have to come back on again. Uh, this is highly contagious. Kirk, this is why I didn't want to do it, because now I want to keep doing it, man. And to tell you the truth, uh, I know it's a dog-eat-dog world out here, and I want to try to protect you, man. I want to try to keep the vultures off you with nothing but facts. So whenever I come back, man, let's do it, man. You know what I mean? Oh, I can't wait. I think that this is going to be a smash of an episode. I think people are going to love this one, so... Uh, again, Troy, dude, you're a beautiful soul. Love you to death, my man. You're the reason why I have any gold pants. So thank Christ I had you at my quarterback. Um, I thank God. I, th- I thank God every day. Because I was like, because losing to Michigan 
is something I never had to experience. So thank God I had you. Um, well, so appreciate you, brother. Hey. Really looking forward to having you back on here. And uh, you let us know how to help out uh, your tournament. And I will plug that on my website. And I'll also put the link uh, to it in uh, the uh, the information on this YouTube episode. You Definitely good, my will. man? Well, thank you, Kirk. Thank you, man. Buckeye Nation, love you guys, man. Hopefully we see you at the golf tournament. It's going to be awesome, man. Go Bucks. All right, you're the best, brother. Appreciate you. That was Thanks. Troy Smith, the Heisman Trophy winner uh, on Buckeye Scoop. Hope you guys had a great time tonight. Uh, again, I know the basketball is getting ready to tip off shortly, so I want to get you guys out of here. But I appreciate you guys. Uh, Troy is uh, one of my dearest friends, uh, obviously a guy that I revere, uh, and was a great teammate, great quarterback. Um, in my opinion, the best quarterback in my life's history. In college, he won the Heisman. So I know CJ got drafted as two overall, but I love Troy. So that was a great episode. Appreciate you guys so much. If you guys enjoyed this content, please leave us a like. Click subscribe. Also, click that little alert bell. Uh, you'll get alert when we go live. Um, and in your comments, I want to give me some feedback on Troy. Um, again, I love him to death. Uh, I think he does a great job. Um, but I think you guys, uh, you guys have some awesome questions. So thank all of you uh, for joining in uh, for the interview. Uh, again, Troy's going to be back. I have a feeling this will not be his last time. But he, uh, I thought he did great. Uh, but I just appreciate you guys so much uh, for making this a huge show. Again, this is a huge show because you guys make it one. And it is always great to be here and kick it with you guys uh, on your Saturday. Uh, so we got some March Madness about to tip off. But again, um, shout out where you guys are watching from. Shout out who you guys are watching with. Do you guys want to play the golf tournament? Uh, and maybe should I get Trey down to Buffalo Wild Wings next Saturday? I don't know if I can pull that off. Uh, he's up in Cleveland, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, but I just appreciate you guys so very, very much. You guys are the absolute best. I hope you guys uh, have a great uh, Saturday night. Let me check in. I got one more super chat. Uh, David Crow, appreciate you for being an ultra member and thank you for the 15. My friend, the Wolverine Slayer, I'll make sure Troy sees this, and one of my favorite Buckeyes. So, um, dude, I really appreciate that. I'm sure I'll show that to Troy. Uh, again, he is, uh, he's the reason why we beat Michigan, man. You can watch those games and tell me there's been a better player in the history of the Robert, because I don't think there has been. So, uh, but I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, Buckeye Nation. Thank you, Scoop family. I hope you guys have a great Saturday with your families. A uh, couple days from the eclipse. The eclipse is going to be wild on Monday, so it's going to be really fun. So I will see you guys tomorrow, likely around, uh, uh, like a little early, like a six o'clock, um, depending upon Nevada's travel schedule. Uh, but we'll kick it with you guys. Looking forward to it. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your night. Go Bucks.